a random collaborative project between Adnan, Brahim, and a few other people. Uh, actually, a lot of people helped out with this one. Uh, we originally targeted for Maker Fair, but we couldn't make it because we had lots of issues. Uh, but uh, let's, let me go through it. So it's an experimental physical interface for the end of the algorithm. Uh, so it all started uh, with Magenta. Magenta is a Google project uh, for, doing, for using the machine learning PowerS to do art. Uh, so about a year ago, they, they posted this. Uh, it's a neural audio synthesis. Uh, so it's a neural network that makes audio. I was like, cool, um, sound plus neural networks. What could possibly go, go wrong? Uh, of course, the default answer to that is math. Uh, so this is the way you actually run this thing, which is an uh, IPython notebook, uh, as, uh, and, and you need GPUs and stuff. The basic idea is you can take a sound and sort of extract it into a model. And then when you run that model, you generate the sound again. Uh, so that's the, the, the very basic idea of what this does. Um, and I was like, wow, this is super cool. Um, and there's no internet. Yeah, um, and they did some really cool things. So for, they, they made this website um, that uh, actually allowed you to play with this algorithm online. So the basic idea is um, they have a trombone that they have uh, recorded and made a model out of. They have an electric guitar that they've recorded and made a model out of. And uh, if the internet works, I should be able to play them. Yeah. Let me try it again. So this is machine learning to make sounds. And this is all cool, but um, you know. Um, yeah, so one, one, one quick thing about the algorithm is normally when you mix two sounds uh, uh, in audio, you will basically hear both of them together. So if you mix a clarinet sound and a trombone sound, it sounds as if both of them are playing together. Uh, but what this does, and especially the, the demo earlier, you kind of had a combined sound of the two. And you could sort of add the two together and come up with a new instrument, almost as if a trombone and a clarinet had a baby. Uh, and that was the, the, that was the thing that totally blew my mind. I was like, that's super cool. You can do so many things with it. Um, but then, you know, nobody's going to make music on a laptop. That's just boring. Like, nobody's going to be like typing on a keyboard making music. Although they're laptop orchestras, but... And so another group at Google called Creative Lab took the sounds from Ensign and created a musical instrument. We call it Ensign Super. That's like wild to me. Here's a flute. Here's a snare. Guess in the middle, this is what it sounds like. <laughs> So, so this came out, and I was like, wow, this is super cool. I want one of these. Uh, and then, the, in the website, you go down and you say, all the technology and design to, used to create Anten Super is available as an open source project. Okay. Yes. Uh, when you go and look at the actual website, it's a proper GitHub page. Uh, it's got all the documentation. Uh, uh, I'll go through some of the stuff they actually have. So. Um, let me actually just open the page up. Um, so this is the PCB part, which I'm guessing most of the people will be excited about. So they actually have the entire document, uh, documentation on how to build a PCB. Uh, the first thing you'll notice is they removed the touch screen bit, because I'm guessing it's a, too a bit too expensive to get like that big a screen. They're going for this form factor, so they have a PCB that's this big. This bit in the middle is actually a touch pad, so there's no screen, but you, you can still touch it, and it actually does the whole uh, morphing bit. A bunch of Ruti encoders, the actual Music synthesis happens on a Raspberry Pi behind. Uh, and they have really nice instructions. They tell you how to uh, put it together. They, they tell you how to solder it, all the things that are involved. There's a touch interface. Uh, this is the audio bit. So the audio is generated uh, with an DAC, external DAC because they don't trust the DAC on board the Raspberry Pi. Uh, that's the Raspberry Pi. Um, there's a small little display. So they kind of shrunk the display into something, something really tiny. Uh, but, but it's super cool. It's, all the documentation is there. Uh, they had the documentation for the software. Uh, so it's using something called Open Frameworks, uh, which is a, a, a framework, C++ framework for doing audio stuff. Um, they have the firmware for the microcontroller on there. Uh, and they have all the samples for the audio to just do a quick demo. Uh, uh, unfortunately, it's uh, 64 GB of sample audio. Uh, it's huge. Uh, it's a lot of files. So I was downloading it the first day. And uh, yeah, estimated time, six hours. 
Uh, left it overnight. I uh, had the 64 GB. It's yeah, the next day, but it was it was painful to get it done. But at the end of the day, I got it. Just a quick uh, setup for the of the whole thing for anybody who's interested. There's a Raspberry Pi that runs the Open Frameworks bit. Uh, there's an STM32 to do all the nifty bits with the rotary encoders and the, the touch uh, sensors. So they use uh, all the shelf touch sensors, two of them, uh, on that touch uh, panel. Uh, so you just get the touch. Um, Audio data comes in as MIDI. That's again taken in by the SCM32 and transferred to the Raspberry Pi. The LED is driven by the Raspberry Pi, and the DAC is also driven by the Raspberry Pi. So, uh, very simple, straightforward uh, PCB, very simple, straightforward circuit. Uh, not very hard to make. Uh, so, of course, uh, yeah, this, the schematic is also online, and so are the Gerbers. So, everything is there, literally. All you need to do is just take them, uh, send them to your favorite um, you know, PCB manufacturing hub. Uh, and uh, you get PCBs like this. Um, I got it in green because that was the choice of color of the people I asked. Um, the bomb is also online, thankfully. So I can go and find all the components. Unfortunately, uh, it's all uh, UK RS Electronics uh, links. So half of them don't work and the other half are not even available in Singapore. So we had to do a lot of swaps and a lot of hacks, but we managed to uh, get it all soldered up. Uh, and are all working. Uh, on the back side, you will see this is a mesh for the touch panel on the back. Um, this is SM32. These are the touch sensors. This is the MIDI input, the display, the audio output bits, and the Raspberry Pi itself. Um, lots of funny things happen though. Uh, bought some random Chinese uh, display from AliExpress. Um, realized the pinouts don't work. So, of course, Bodge Life. Um, you've got to bodge all the cables there. Uh, <laughs> Usual stuff. So we had this working. This is a, the first trial of it working. The video is kind of uh, horrible, but uh, when I show you the demo later, you can check out the, the display. The, the, the smaller OLED is beautiful, and the, the, the stuff they have set up to make it work, it kind of tracks your finger as you move your finger around, uh, and the four corners give you different instruments so you can sort of morph between them uh, on the four corners. Uh, it's super cool. Um, Thanks to Terence from uh, UWC uh, Tampines, I got uh, a laser cut box made. They also have the box designs online. So literally, they've done everything for you. All you need to do is compile the software and make it run. Uh, it's a nice box. Uh, it's got a MIDI input, the audio output, and the power. Of course, um, none of my MIDI keyboards uh, actually output MIDI anymore because every day, uh, these days, everything does USB MIDI. So, well. Bodge life again, I had to cut a hole in the nice case and open the Raspberry Pi MIDI uh, USB port to plug in my MIDI device. And a couple of uh, uh, USB uh, sort of open frameworks hacks to get the MIDI from the USB instead of the MIDI from the SDM32. Um, otherwise, uh, you ask, where do you like do the cool thing? Like, where do you do the machine learning, right? So I was kind of figured out, got all my synthesizers set up, and I was like, I have my 64 GB samples, I want to make my new samples now. How do I set it up? So I uh, read about the audio pipeline, which is how you create new samples, how you sample sounds, make models out of them, and you can morph them into things. And then I saw this bit. Uh, needs, uh, oh, well, they, set, they set it up with uh, 8 NVIDIA, 8K GPUs, 128 GB RAMs, and 8 CPU cores to generate, to make the models, to, to train the network. Uh, I have no idea, but... Um, uh, I don't want to know. <laughs> so I'm stuck at this part now. I have the whole thing set up. I'm now trying to figure out how to make new models for this stuff. Um, any ideas, any help would be uh, appreciated. Or uh, if you have access to uh, 8 NVIDIA K80 GPUs uh, or something similar, we, we could talk and uh, see what we can do with it. But overall, yeah, I could, I could spend a lot of money and uh, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, I guess. I should have gone to the TensorFlow meetup now instead of yeah. Google, instead of coming here. It's at Google right now, right? Yes. Uh, but that's a quick sort of adventure that I did with the whole thing. I have the whole thing set up. Uh, I probably don't have enough time for a demo, but what I'll do is I'll set it up later. If you guys want to come over, play with it. It's super fun. I have a, a much, yeah, I have a keyboard and a smaller loudspeaker, or we can plug it into the AV system later. Uh, we can have some fun with it. So, question is, you guys, uh, are we jamming or not? <laughs> so?